Okay, so 7.3 cross section. So technically this is the first day of 7.3 because there's multiple days of volumes. So I think cross sections is the easiest one to understand first. But the big thing to understand is, you know, when you take an integral of some function, you're really looking for an area, right? So it gives you the area between the function and the x-axis. Sometimes it's positive. If it's underneath, it's a negative. It's still an area, but then it gives you like a negative answer for the integral. So when you take the antiderivative of, let's say, uh, x, what you get is an x squared. You get like a one half x squared, right? So it kind of makes sense, like the x becomes an x squared. If you take the antiderivative of an area, which is an x squared, you will get an x cubed, right? Antiderivative, you, you go up one for your power. So that's why when you take the integral of an area, it actually gives you a volume. How are we gonna look for volumes of cross sections? Using cross sections is we're going to use integrals of areas. Okay, and then we talked about like what a cross section is and all of that in class already. Um, okay, so what we really are doing then is we know all these already. This area of a circle is pi r squared. If we take the antiderivative of pi r squared, we're gonna get a whole bunch of circles that we can stack on top of each other, and that's gonna give us a volume, right? If you stack up a bunch of CDs, you get something like you get a big old stack and that takes up like a 3D space, right? Instead of a circle, now you have a bunch of circles stacked up and you get like, you know, something that's like stacked up really high, so it's in three dimensions. So that I would rewrite as probably this because you can take that constant out and then you can, you know, you can leave it, but this is also true and I usually write it that way, okay? So what about semicircles? Well, it's the same thing as half a circle. So then I would probably take that pi over two out. So it looks something like that. What about a square? Well, a square is just side squared, right? So I do have to replace the R. I have to replace this R. I have to replace the S with something else. But in general, this is my equation for um, squares. So to get the volume of a bunch of squares, this is one square. A bunch of squares is like that, okay? Um, and then rectangles is base times height. You have to figure out what the base is, what the height is. And then this one has been a while. <laughs> so equilateral triangles. There are regular triangles, one half base times height. Equilateral triangles are very special. Equilateral triangles, that's when it's like, you know, it's sitting on the wall. So one side is sitting on the wall and what comes out from the wall, what comes out jutting out at you as a cross section is equilateral. So it comes out at a point. Okay, and then how would you remember s squared root three all over four? I think of it as an equilateral triangle looks something like that. When you cut it in half, you get a 30, 60, 90, right? So 60, 60, 60, cut it in half, you get a 30, 60, 90. And then one side of that 30, 60, 90, that long leg, remember that one has a root three. So that's how I remember like s squared root three over four. So it has a two, three, four. So that's what I do. All right, I would take that root three over four and I would just kind of pull it out. So it looks something like that. Notice how a lot of these look really similar, <laughs> right? So we're, we're writing it like this first and then we're plugging in whatever we need to plug in. Okay, so let's give it a try. So for this one, it says perpendicular to the x-axis. Perpendicular to the x-axis means that we are in terms of x. We're in terms of x. Okay, so I drew here, I'm gonna show you first. I drew here one square perpendicular to the x-axis as a cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. Perpendicular to that goes up and down. So I drew one side of the square up and down, and then I'm looking at this and I'm pretending the wall is, you know, the wall is my paper. So the wall has this axis, these two axes on it, and then the wall itself is shaded. And on the wall, I'm going to glue this square, but I'm only gluing this side of the square. The other part of the square is coming out towards me. Okay. So what I see is this up and down, that's the side of the square. I'm going to label that S. The S is a Y value that goes up and down. That's a Y value. If it's a Y value, it goes from up here to down here. That's a top minus bottom. Also in terms of X means tops, top minus bottom. 
right? So what is your square going to be? Well, your square is s squared in terms of x. So I did 0 to 1 because that's my picture from 0 to, this was 0, this was 1. And then I just have to plug in that side. What is that side again? It tells you right here it's top minus bottom. What is the top minus bottom? The top, I'm going to remind you while still covering, <laughs> the top was a line, y equals x. So x is the top. The bottom is the parabola, y equals x squared. So that's why I have minus x squared, top minus bottom. I highlighted the side. So the S represents the side of the square, and this is my S as one side, and then that side gets squared. So that's why I highlighted it. Okay, how would it be different if it's equilateral? Well, we just, you know, it's the same formula, but with the root three over four in front, basically, right? So it's the same thing, but with the root three over four in front. Okay, what about a triangle with height two? So if it has a height of two, the base is what's touching the wall still. So the base is still my S, basically. That's my base. The height is two. So it's whatever this is times two. So then I just wrote it in this way. I said, okay, base times height for a rectangle. And then this is my base. And this is my height, which is two. So it's just that times two. There's no squared on top. So be real careful about all that stuff. But that's your final like setup answer, all right? So let's look at number two. For number two, you have to draw your own picture. And I'm gonna start off saying, okay, you're gonna draw your own picture and probably you're gonna graph the easy parts first. This is the y-axis, this is the horizontal line. Go ahead and graph, plug in zero, plug in one, plug in two with a little sad face. This doesn't work. Plug in three, nope, plug in four, and then you get two. So go ahead and graph it first. And when you graph it, you get something like that. And what I did is I drew one. So also, why did I draw it this way? So I drew it this way because I'm perpendicular to the y-axis. This is the y-axis going up and down. If I'm perpendicular, I'm going that way. So I have to draw all my cross sections this way, left and right. So if I'm drawing it left and right, and the first one was squares. So this is the side of the square. If I'm looking from kind of the bottom left corner, so this is my wall, okay? and then I kind of put my face down here and I look up, I'll see that one of the squares might go like this and then it kind of juts out of the wall that way. There's another one that's smaller coming out this way. There's another one that's smaller. There's another one that's bigger. So there are many, many squares. I just drew one somewhere. I felt like drawing it, okay? So I said, okay, this is the side. The side goes left and right. That's an X value. X's go left and right. So this is in terms of y, it's a right minus left. Okay, so how would we set up the integral? Let's look at this. Zero to two, why is it zero to two? Because we're in terms of y. On the y-axis, we're going from zero to two. And then what is this? There's no y squared here. Well, I'm going right minus left. What's the right side of the orange shade? It's this. This is y equals root x. Can I put a root x? No, we're in terms of y. I solve for x and I get y squared. I square both sides. And that's why this is y squared on the right. The left of the orange is this line right here, which is x equals zero, so minus zero. If you don't wanna write the minus zero, it's okay. But if you put it in, I actually like it better because then I can recognize that you, you're just leaving it. You're doing right minus left and then you're leaving it alone. So that's actually better. Okay, the next one is a rectangle with the height being twice the base. I want you to think about what that would look like. So this is the base. If the height is twice that, then it's gonna be this base and then another base times two. So wouldn't it look something like that? Or I wrote it a little bit differently in another class, I wrote it like that. See how that's the same thing? So this is still two times y to the fourth. This is still two times y to the fourth. Can you bring that two outside to the front of the integral? Yes, absolutely. They're all equivalent. They're all okay. So why did I highlight in blue? 
because I wanted to show this is the base of your cross section, this S, this one S. This is the base of your, uh, sorry, this is the base of your rectangle. This is one base. The height is this, that's your base. Okay. Um, semicircles are a little bit tricky. So semicircles, here's the thing you have to remember. For semicircles, your radius, so imagine this being, instead of a square, it's a semicircle. So go like that, right? A semicircle. So for a semicircle, what's this called? If this is a semicircle, what's this? Is that R? No, that's the diameter. So really, R is half of a diameter. It's half this value. So whatever this is, the radius is half of that. So that's why when I write it in, I have your pi over 2, I have 0 to 2, and then my side of the square, I take half of that, that's my radius, and then my radius squared. So here's my squared, okay, in terms of y still. Okay, how does this all look different if we are in terms of x? That's the question. What's the difference? Well, instead of 0 to 2, instead of being on the y-axis in terms of y, now we're on the x-axis. So check these answers and see if they make sense. Hopefully they do. 0 to 4 on the x-axis, top minus bottom, quantity squared. And then, what about this? Same kind of thing. So here's 0 to 4, the base times the height times 2. Right? So I just wrote squared instead. And then semicircles, pi over 2, 0 to 4. Here's my base divided by 2 to get my radius squared. Radius squared. There you go. Okay. And then looking on the second page, just looking at the answers basically, because you guys started slash finish this on your own. So for this one, we said, okay, we're actually only going to calculate for C. So uh, I'm okay with you guys just doing the setups today. That's the most important. Okay, um, so what I did is I drew one cross section. So I chose between square, semicircle, and equilateral. I chose the semicircle, and I drew one semicircle perpendicular to the x-axis. So it goes up and down. And then I had to figure out, oh, this is this is actually a two, and then this is actually a four. So let's let's be clear, right? Two squared gives me four. That's that's that intersection right there. Okay. So then when we write it, we're going from 0 to 2, and then the base is going to be the side of the square. If I were to draw a square, it would be that whole thing. So top minus bottom. The top is the line. The bottom is the parabola. Side squared, and then in terms of x. The next one is going to be same kind of thing, but this is semicircle. So you take that side divided by 2, and then in front you have your pi over 2. Okay, and then equilateral triangle, same kind of formula as this basically, but with the root 3 over 4 in front. Plug that into your calculator. Make sure that you can plug it in, and I think this is the answer. I did not check, but this is from years ago. I think this is the answer. You can let me know if I'm wrong. Okay, um, for number 5, I went ahead and drew one semicircle again. So when I drew one semicircle, I drew it over here. I could draw it up here, but then you'd barely see it. I could draw it down here on the very bottom, but you know, I didn't. So you're perpendicular to the y-axis, which is why the base of my semicircle is left and right, because it's the y-axis if I'm perpendicular and left and right. How come I filled in these numbers? Because that's, that's what they are, right? You plug in three, you get nine. So that's a three comma nine. This is a three, this is a nine. So you do have to figure those out yourself as well, normally when you draw. All right, so what would your scores look like? Zero to nine, so you're in terms of y. Remember, you're in terms of y. So zero to nine on the y-axis, and then you're going right minus left. The right minus the left is technically, you have to solve for x, which is the positive, this is the positive square root, right, of y, okay? There is a negative square root, but right now we're on the right side, so that's a positive square root. That'll come up later, all right? So right minus left, quantity squared, because it's a square in terms of y, 
semicircles looks almost the same. We can see what changes now. And then equilateral triangles looks almost the same as that, but with the root three over four. I want you to be able to plug this into a calculator. Oh no, there's no y's in a calculator. What do you do? You use x's. Okay, plug it into a calculator and then I'll give you the answer. But I also want you to see what it looks like when you plug it in. That's what it looks like. That's what that looks like. You can literally, I'll do it with you right now if you want to see. I'll do it again. So math nine. And then, oh, I realized, you know, just kidding, clear. I need that fraction. Make sure that you just, just do it all in one step. Don't do it step by step, okay? So alpha y equals gets me to a fraction, press enter. I have a square root of three on top. On the bottom, I have a four. Now I do math nine. I'm going from zero all the way to nine. And then in here, see how this is a quantity squared? I actually want a parentheses, three minus square root of x. And then make sure I close my parentheses outside of that root, and then I square it. So now it looks exactly the same, right? It looks the same as this, but this, it has this invisible bracket that we don't even see. All right, this is in terms of x, press enter. It should just give you the same answer. There you go, okay? So your answer here is five point, we wanted four decimals, 5.8457. If you round the fourth decimal there, I think that's right, okay? All right, so give that a try. You can do it. Bye, guys.